Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chief Deputy Michael Fowler, F-O-W-L-E-R, and with the Sheriff's Office. I'm also here with representatives from St. John Fisher, and uh, our purpose today is to update you on the investigation that uh, began yesterday afternoon here on campus. As most people are aware, uh, yesterday evening, around the 5 p.m. time, uh, an individual came onto campus and went into the Wegman School of Pharmacy, located a staff member who was working in her office and initiated a conversation with that staff member. They spoke for a few minutes. Uh, the individual left the office and returned about 20 minutes later to continue the conversation. The staff member became uh, aware that there were some emotional disturbance issues with this individual. The conversation became concerning to her. Uh, she felt unsafe at the moment, and she mentioned possibly contacting security to help this individual uh, with directions and getting some of their needs met. At the point uh, of that conversation, the individual stood up, produced a knife from his pocket, and attempted to uh, injure the staff member. Thankfully, she was able to fight off that attack. She was able to push the individual outside her office and secure the door so she could remain in a safe location and contact security, who then contacted the sheriff's office. As you can imagine, with a call like this, there was a significant police response to the scene. Uh, St. John Fisher had security staff members on scene, and they also had additional staff members coming in from home to work with the deputies on scene and attempt to locate this individual. The campus is fairly large. There's several buildings. So immediately, our deputies began a search of all of the buildings on campus. They requested assistance from the New York State Police to help with such a large area to search. We brought in resources of, of canine dogs, additional deputies. Uh, we had all three zones send deputies to the scene to respond. Again, as I mentioned, the troopers sent a significant amount of troopers to the scene. So you can imagine this is a very large police presence now on campus. The university also initiated a shelter in place warning to all students and staff members. Those warnings are routinely received by parents and loved ones of those students and staff members. So uh, we now have people from across the state and beyond that are alerted to this sort of incident taking place on campus and of course we fully understand the feeling of panic that must have been going through those, those loved ones' minds at that moment. When you get a message like that and you're concerned about your student or your loved one on campus, that is a significant uh, message that you're trying to process. As I mentioned, this search involved several buildings, several resources. It went on for quite some time. Uh, during this time, we were able to use the, the cooperation and the coordination with the university. Uh, that's one of our takeaways out of this investigation was the cooperation and the coordination of the university staff was invaluable. They handled it as best as we could have asked for and side by side, our resources were searching every building going door to door. Imagine that, going door to door in eight buildings of a university with canine, with law enforcement, and staff members trying to ensure the safety and security of those students and staff on campus. We were able to use some technology, specifically video technology, uh, in coordination with the school's security system and our sheriff's office, uh, REOC, the Regional Investigative Operations Center, and their use of, of software called FUSIS. We were able to work with that video technology and we were able to help direct portions of that search. At one point, uh, security was able to obtain a still photo of the suspect, provided that to law enforcement. We took that still photo, we searched through camera footage and were able to locate the suspect arriving on campus in his vehicle an hour earlier. So we backtracked and that led us to what vehicle was involved. Uh, at about 9 p.m., 
We made the decision uh, based upon that security footage and the, the investigative work. We determined that the suspect had left campus. That's what gave us that bit of confidence to recommend to the university that it was time to lift the shelter in place and that we would take over the investigation out in the community with the search for this suspect. And that's what took place. So at 9 p.m. last evening, this, the search transitioned off of campus into the community. We put out a bolo to all law enforcement agencies looking for that specific vehicle and that individual. Uh, we were able to identify that the individual was a student on campus, and that gave us a name, an address, vehicle description, all sorts of things that we needed to be able to further that search. At approximately 12.30 a.m. this morning, this suspect was identified uh, driving down Jefferson Road in Henrietta. And I want to emphasize that this is just based on good old-fashioned police work. While most of the community is sleeping, the deputies and assisted by the troopers were out looking for this individual, recognizing that we can't let this go. We have to continue the investigation. We have to locate this individual. So we, uh, a deputy located him on Jefferson Road, called for assistance, and he was taken into custody at about 12.30 this morning. He was then transported to one of our facilities uh, to further the investigation. Throughout that investigation, we learned some of the details that took place in that office. Uh, we also learned the suspect's intent, and he was subsequently charged with uh, attempted kidnapping in the second degree, which is a Class B felony. He was also charged with attempted sexual abuse in the first degree, which is a Class D felony. Those are pretty significant charges, right? Uh, we want to address that. This person's intent was violence. Thankfully, it didn't end up that way. Through all the resources that were applied, through the coordination, the cooperation with the university, the technology, it was able to be prevented, and he was taken into custody in hopes of this never happening again. Thankfully, and, and most importantly, the staff member is uninjured, and was able to react appropriately as best she could and was able to uh, separate herself from the offender and seek safety. We're very thankful for that. Again, I want to thank the New York State Police for their assistance, St. John Fisher University, their staff members, their security members. It, it, it was absolutely uh, the best case we could have hoped for this coordination and this teamwork trying to solve this case. Again, to the parents, I want to take a minute. We recognize, we fully recognize the potential severity of this incident and what it must have felt like to be a parent, be at home, and get this alert message on your phone. It's terrible. It's terrible that we have to live in a society like that, and we have to face these fears. And last night, that almost came to fruition. You know, parents from across the state and beyond experienced that panic, and now you're helpless. What do you do? You have to wait for information, and you have to wait for law enforcement and the university to do their jobs and try and bring some measure of safety and security to your loved one. Well, that's exactly what happened. The school re responded appropriately. They immediately put out an alert, had the staff and school shelter in place. They worked with us relentlessly through the night, shared information, and this was able to be solved without anyone being injured. We're so thankful for that. I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to allow questions. We'll take a few questions, either to myself or the university staff. If anyone has questions. So I'm going to 
Uh, I'm going to confirm that that was the suspect's intent, but uh, I'm not going to go into gory details. Uh, that was the suspect's intent. He was prepared to act on that, uh, and we found evidence leading us to that, that uh, conclusion. Disarm, but we we train in a, in a, as a run off from run hide fight. We call it avoid deny defend. And it's an all hazards approach to any kind of uh, critical incident. Um, fight when you when it's your last resort, and that's what the staff are did. I'm gonna I want to elaborate on that if I can. Uh, you know this this staff member. Man, what an amazing, what an amazing, strong woman. She did exactly what she had to do, and she reacted on her basic instinct. Her desire to preserve her life is what drove her actions, and thank goodness they did. Uh, we don't know how that would have ended up otherwise, but we can all imagine. And, you know, her strong will and desire to uh, achieve a positive outcome as positive as possible out of that situation took over and she was able to push that offender outside the office and secure the door behind her. Um, that gave her that separation from the threat that allowed her to seek a measure of safety. She was able to call security, ask for help, report her situation. The offender actually had to walk off, was left with, without an option there. So the offender walked off, and when we arrived on scene, one of the first things we did was bring in the bloodhound, our bloodhound peak, uh, immediately picked up a trail from that office that led us down the hallway to another classroom where we believe he paused for, for a few moments, um, and then eventually left the campus, and, and we used the technology and the good old-fashioned police work to track him down eight miles away across the community. So we as the sheriff's office do not have any uh, open investigations or prior contacts with him, but we are talking to other police agencies right now. Uh, there is a concern amongst law enforcement that this may not be his only offense. Uh, what we want to do is get the message out to the public that if you have had concerning contact with this individual, if you've uh, experienced threats or just unease in your communications with this person, please call 911. We really need to know what the bigger picture is here. We need to know how big the problem is and what type of resources need to be applied here. Um, you know, I, I mentioned early, earlier that clearly there's some behavioral issues at play and what's the cause behind that, we don't know, but uh, we need to know how big this issue is. It's this, the intent here is clearly very, very concerning, and he took actions to actually bring that about. I'm going to let the university answer that. Good afternoon. My name is Matha Thornton. I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, and yes, I can confirm he is a student at Fisher. Um, I have a few questions for you, actually. Um, Certainly. Um, He is a student on campus, so yes. Certainly, whenever we have an incident like this on campus, we will debrief that. There's, I think there's always lessons to learn. I think today we are so thankful for the partnership with our local law enforcement. We're very proud of our safety and security office, all the training and the protocols that we did have in place for this to resolve quickly. But of course, we'll always debrief. We can always learn from a situation like this, absolutely. At the time of day that this occurred, it's an academic building. 
we are an academic institution, so there is a, a balance of openness on our academic um, on our campus. So yeah, you would be able to have gone into that building at that time of day. No. He is a first year. <laughs> 